We had a letter from somebody, a mother, who was really at her wit's end because her child had an inherited condition that raised his blood pressure. And she was extremely worried that when he was older, unless she started feeding him a vegan plant-based diet now, that he would get this condition, which his father had and his grandparents had, but he doesn't want to do it. He just doesn't. And so she's feeling incredibly guilty that she can't implement these. And she also works full time (laughs) and she has other children and making special food for him is also a huge stress. Can you give some advice to a parent like that who's dealing with a very calcitrant teenager and also has not very much time to make these changes? Mm -hmm. Who's probably listening because she's listening uh, to every episode. (laughs) uh, Yes. Um, My sympathies. Yeah, it can be hard. If I had the answer to how to manage a teenager to do exactly what a parent wants, I, I, that would be incredible. I don't have that answer. But yeah, there's a concept called disenchantment that I really like is trying to help someone to achieve dis. You can't force someone to be disenchanted with something. So our food is very enchanting, right? So as I was saying before, all of our senses are geared, the smell of the bacon or the, the look of the cupcake, all of our senses are really geared towards uh, seeking out and getting that high calorie food. We're getting very enchanted. Uh, So what I try to talk to families about is trying to achieve disenchantment. So think about a rose, that a rose is uh, very enchanting, the smell and the uh, thoughts of love and Valentine's Day and stuff. But if you grab the rose, underneath the rose might be thorns. Um, So you pause, a person pauses before they grab the rose and think about the thorn. Um, So that's what I try to teach people about is to become disenchanted. So yes, uh, you know, I haven't had bacon in eight years, but the smell still makes my mouth water. But then I know that if I grab the bacon, it has thorns. So it has all the environmental issues and the animal welfare issues and my my health issues. So I, I become disenchanted with the bacon. So that's what I try to help people understand is how to become disenchanted. So if this young man, if there was something learn about to become disenchanted, that hopefully maybe that would help him break that cycle of wanting those foods that are not good for his health. Mm -hmm. That's something that I try to work with on families too. Uh, And again, it's for the moment because no teenager is necessarily Mm -hmm. concerned about their blood pressure. It's a very abstract concept that is going to happen, cause problems in decades. That is so... Powerful. I can't even, very personal, super quick story. I was maybe like vegan for six months or something. And my husband and were out to dinner at a restaurant and I got a salad and I did the like no bacon, no cheese, you know, so we're in the South. So everything comes with bacon and cheese over lettuce. And I said all that. And it was a kind of dimly lit, dark restaurant, romantic little place. And the salad came and I started eating it and there weren't any cheese, but I tasted bacon bits, you know, it, real bacon bits. And I didn't say anything to my husband or to them. And in my head, I was said, oh, this is so delicious. This will be the last time. And I ate it because I had, it was already here. It's already died as you know, the whole thing you go through. And it, okay. So fast forward, I don't know, like 11 years later, like a long time ago then. And something similar happened, not on a salad. I burst into tears the second I tasted it. And I spit it all over the ground. It was outside at like a, an outside event. And I, I mean, I was bawling. And that is such an example of disenchantment. You know, by this point, I had so much of a heart closeness to what goes on behind closed doors. I guess I'm just sharing that because just to, you know, give even more highlights to what you just said, that it's so powerful, that disenchantment, if you can, you know... Take that journey. That's a good story. Uh, unfortunate that you had a bacon. But um, another analogy that I like to make with the teenagers. So for fun, um, I'll ask a teenager, uh, are you saving for retirement? And a lot of them are like, what? I don't even have a job. What are you talking about? And so I say, well, like, imagine you had a hundred bucks in your pocket. You could go out tonight and spend it and have a great time. Or you could in- save it for retirement. You could put it in some bank or some investment. And then in 50 years, you'll have hopefully a lot of more money. And in, in 50 years, you can go out and, you know, do whatever people in there, you know, at that 2070 want to do for fun, uh, because you'll have the money. And I'm like, eating healthy today is kind of like saving for retirement, right? So you eat healthy today, so that later in life, you can do the things you want to do. 
sometimes I'm sure that, that doesn't resonate at all with them. No. I when no. I was a kid, I wouldn't. I'm trying I, to. <laughs> but I mean, maybe <laughs> an exceptional kid. Maybe I remember when I was. I think I've told this story when I was in sixth grade. Laura Van Doren, who was a very pretty. A senior in high school came to our class to talk to us about smoking. Now we had heard all the nurses stand up and point to those dirty lungs and tell us not to smoke. But when Laura Van Doren said, I quit smoking because my boyfriend said that my mouth tasted like an ashtray when, it, when he kissed me, that had an impact on me. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. like the prom dress is much more mm -hmm. apt to have an impact. But I respect that you're trying all angles because it's true that different, different kids will react to different things.